This lion got stuck in a trap for years and was in a lot of pain. But three years later, something astonishing happened. Animals' lives are constantly placed at risk for ridiculous reasons, such as human desire for rare animal products. Poaching has led to the death and endangerment of several animals, but many of these stories don't make it to the internet. Well, one of these tragic occurrences certainly did, and it broke everyone's heart. This story took place in Makamu National Park in Tanzania. For years, poachers frequented this area, leaving many animals dead or badly injured. In 2009, as usual, some poachers set traps in the park, hoping to capture animals. Sadly, it was this illegal act that left a young lion in a state of misery for three years. Makamu Park is Tanzania's fourth-largest national park, blessed with a variety of animal species, including elephants, buffaloes, zebras, wildebeest, hyenas, leopards, and lions. These animals roam freely in the park in search of food. So, one sunny afternoon in 2009, a lion cub set out to hunt for food. He often went out with the rest of the pack, so despite being young, he knew how to hunt. When he reached the field area, he laid down in the tall grass and waited for an unsuspecting animal to pass by. Little did this cub know that he was hunting his last prey, at least for the next three years. After 20 minutes, the cub started to get impatient when he didn't spot any prey. Besides, the weather was becoming scorching, so the lion started to pant and desperately wanted to get under the shade. Over time, it seemed like he would return to his den on an empty stomach. But just as the lion was about to give up hope, he spotted an antelope. You see, lions are the second fastest wild cats, with a top running speed of 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers, though only for very short bursts. This can be highly exhausting, which is why lions have to be close to their prey before attacking. So, this young cub waited until the antelope was within close range. But when he charged, he missed his target, and the antelope began to run for his life. This young cub wasn't the type to give up, so he started chasing after the antelope. The chase went on for about two minutes until something devastating happened. The lion, blinded by his desire to feast on the antelope, didn't see a snare that was set by poachers. He ran straight into it. It was a creepy device with a metal catching ring and a bait in the middle. As soon as the lion poked his head into the trap, it instantly slammed shut. The cub tried to free himself from the trap, but he only ended up tightening the metal ring around his neck. As minutes passed by, the poor animal still kept trying to free himself, but all was to no avail. The antelope, who seemed to have forgotten that the lion was about to take him down, waited, perhaps out of pity, to see what would eventually happen to the young lion. But after waiting for about five minutes, the antelope left, leaving the poor cub to his terrible fate. The evening sky started to turn into molten brass, and daylight began to drain away. Soon enough, the moon became the only visible source of light, and it cast a sad gaze at the poor lion as he continued trying to free himself from the trap. Finally, at dawn, the cub successfully pulled himself from the trap, but the metal snare still remained around his neck. As soon as he was free, he didn't even try to move around. The cub, who was clearly exhausted and in pain, just lay on the grass. Sadly, this would be the beginning of a terrifying life that the lion would never have envisaged. After a while, the cub, who had regained some strength, got up and went in search of his pride. By then, the snare had already cut deep into his flesh, and he was bleeding profusely. When the injured cub found his pride, they could tell that he was badly hurt, and they sympathized with him. Sadly, all they could offer was their love, moral support, and care. Of course, none of them could remove the snare from his neck, as setting the lion free required human help. As time passed, the cub's condition worsened, and his wound became infected. With each passing day, the snare dug deeper into the cub's neck, making it hard for him to grow a mane, breathe, or eat. The poor animal was in a deplorable condition, and his wounds continued bleeding. Since the discomfort caused by the snare made it impossible for him to move freely, he couldn't hunt. So, how would the animal survive? Would he starve to death? 
Well, what you are about to see will leave you in tears. This cub probably could have starved to death, but his family members came to the rescue. Each day, they brought food to him, and they did this for three years. Whenever they went out to hunt, they always came back with the cub's share. What a beautiful display of love. Indeed, animals have so much more compassion than we sometimes give them credit for. Now that feeding was out of the way, what about the snare around the lion's neck? Would he ever be free from it? Keep watching because something unexpected will happen. After a few months, park rangers finally noticed the injured lion, and they began a rescue mission to remove the metal wire around his neck. Unfortunately, when they started tracking down the animal, they discovered that saving the cub was going to be difficult. For some reason best known to the suffering lion, he started hiding far away in the wilderness so the rangers couldn't locate him. Besides, he was protected by his kin, and they didn't let anyone come near him. A wildlife rescue team eventually intervened, and an operation to save the animal began. The team split up, and each group was assigned a different task. One group was to find, catch, and sedate the animal to remove the snare, while the other group had to chase away the lion's kin. All groups did their best, and within a few days. They had finally sedated the animal and cut away the electrical wire around his neck. It was just in the nick of time because if they had taken longer to save the cub, the snare would have suffocated him to death. A team of veterinarians treated the animal, and they set him free. This rescue ended three years of pain and suffering for the lion. Ever since the rescue, this cub would often go to the place where the rescuers removed the snare around his neck. Although he didn't get too close to the site, he would just stare at the spot for a few minutes and then walk away. The rangers believe it was the lion's way of expressing his gratitude to his rescuers. A few months later, the lion was spotted, and this time around, a lot had changed. The lion had gained considerable muscle mass and also an adorable mane. The lion now walks happily in the wild, and only the scar around his neck is a reminder of that bitter experience. But would this be the last lion to suffer at the hands of poachers? What do you think can be done to curb poaching activities? Sadly, ever since the decline of tigers, there is now a growing demand for lion claws and bones in parts of the Far East for use in traditional medicines. Researchers have shown that the population of lions is on a serious decline. There were an estimated 200,000 lions in Africa in the 60s, but this number has now dropped massively to just 23,000 to 25,000 individuals. Fortunately, there are projects such as the Sauna Project in Tanzania and other parts of Africa and the world at large that have been set up to protect national park areas against poaching activities. Hopefully, projects such as these will help protect and preserve wildlife for the future. What do you think about the story? How do you think poaching can be curbed? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. Also, if you found the story educational, then share it with your friends so they don't miss out on it. Give this video a thumbs up, and if you haven't, please turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on more stories. See you next time. Thank you. When a killer whale accidentally runs aground on the coast, it must be very scared and panicked inside. It kept howling, hoping that its companion could save itself, but its companion was doomed to be powerless. Fortunately, its howling has attracted people's attention, and people have made great efforts to save the killer whale. Fortunately, the killer whale finally returned to the sea successfully. As the overlord of the ocean, killer whales generally rarely appear in people's field of vision. Many people see killer whales in the aquarium, and it is rare to see killer whales at sea, let alone on land. But one early morning in July 2015, Eric heard a very strange sound during his daily patrol mission in the sea. After rushing over, he found a killer whale on land. Eric is a whale researcher. He was sailing in a boat that day when he suddenly heard a strange sound coming from behind the rock. After going around the back of the rock, Eric saw an orca stranded on the rubble. Eric immediately called the Marine Conservation Organization, knowing he couldn't help the huge guy alone. 
Eric told environmental groups that a killer whale was caught between sharp rocks, and the tide kept receding, and the killer whale was getting farther and farther away from the water. After the local environmental protection organization got the news, they immediately sent people to help. Whale experts in environmental organizations speculate that the stranded killer whale should have been caused by hunting. Killer whales like to hunt in groups, and seals are one of their favorite prey. Killer whales are very smart, they probably want to keep the seals on the shore, so that they can be easily obtained. While the other killer whales waited patiently for the seal to enter the trap, the young female killer whale must have been anxious and misjudged her position. As a result, after the tide receded, she found herself swimming too far from the coast. Far away until immobile. When Eric found the killer whale, it had just run aground and was still struggling, leaving many wounds on its abdomen, which stained the nearby seawater a little red. It kept calling for help and was obviously very frightened. After Eric reported the situation to the Environmental Protection Organization, the people of the Environmental Protection Organization did not dare to delay for a moment, because they knew that the longer the delay, the more dangerous the situation of the killer whale would be. People from the Environmental Protection Organization arrived at the scene quickly. They first observed whether they could help the killer whale leave the broken rock and return to the sea. After careful consideration, they had to admit that they couldn't. The place where the killer whale ran aground was a small island, and they had no way to call the equipment. If you want to artificially help the killer whale escape, they need to move the killer whale back to the sea by hand. This is obviously unrealistic, this little guy is just too big. Although this killer whale is only 9 years old, it is still young, but it also weighs several tons. Moreover, the skin of killer whales is very smooth, and it is difficult for people to find the point of application. Someone suggested that the killer whale could be pulled back into the sea by tying a rope to the tail of the killer whale, and then using the power of the boat to pull the killer whale out. But this plan was quickly rejected. The reason is also very simple, the terrain does not allow it. The place where the killer whale ran aground was a piece of broken rock, densely covered with many barnacles. Both barnacles and broken rocks are very sharp. If the killer whale is pulled out rashly, it will cause great damage to the killer whale. At this time, the killer whale has already suffered some injuries from these broken rocks, and these are just because of the killer whale's own twisting. And the damage done by pulling the killer whale out would only be greater. Fortunately, human wisdom is limitless, and soon some experts came up with a new solution. Since it is impossible to artificially help the killer whale out of trouble, let the killer whale do it by itself. You only need to help the killer whales to survive until the next high tide, and the killer whales can naturally return to the sea along the tide. However, new problems also emerged. The next high tide will be 8 hours later, and the orcas may not be able to survive that time. How can they help the orcas survive this difficult 8 hours? After consulting professionals, I learned that it is only necessary to keep the killer whale cool and moist. As for how to do it, this is a marathon rescue. Around the sea, there is water everywhere, and the ships brought cloth. Because the cloth can keep the killer whale moist for a longer period of time. When people approached the killer whale, the killer whale also sensed people's kindness, and the killer whale, which was still howling, gradually calmed down. It's just that the killer whale's body is still trembling, expressing its fear. People slowly covered the killer whale with cloth, and then with the cloth with sea water. People covered the killer whale's eyes with cloth, and then slowly stroked the killer whale. This trick was very effective. After losing sight, the killer whale calmed down slowly under the comfort of people, and its body gradually eased. The summer in July is very hot, and the evaporation rate of water is surprisingly fast. Fortunately, they were lucky, the whole morning was covered with dark clouds, the sun didn't come out, and the sea breeze kept people cool. But at noon, the dark clouds dispersed. As soon as the scorching sun came out, almost all the heat was released, and the air became hot and dry all of a sudden. Although the cloth covering the whale was still wet, 
the moisture evaporated at a speed visible to the naked eye, and the cloth was getting hotter and hotter. People can only increase the frequency of water changes, and also change the cloth in time. Fortunately, the sea water is still cool, and people are just more tired. In order to enhance efficiency, people used flexible water pipes and water pumps to make a simple water pump, which can continuously provide cool sea water for killer whales. The killer whale's mood has also completely stabilized, and its breathing has become gentle. Although the killer whale still calls from time to time, it doesn't sound so miserable anymore. The killer whale should be telling its family that it is safe, because a few killer whales can be faintly seen on the sea in the distance, and they are also constantly calling. The rescue work was going on in an orderly manner, and Eric couldn't help but imagine how bad the situation of this young female killer whale would be if he hadn't heard the cry of the killer whale. It should be very difficult to return to the sea. Going to the sea must have suffered great pain. People are glad that this is just a young killer whale, which weighs no more than three tons. If it is an adult killer whale, the weight can even reach seven tons. If it is replaced by an adult orca, people may not have a solution, because the adult orca is heavier and brings greater pressure on the lungs. In the sea, the buoyancy of the sea water will help to offset part of it, but on land, all this is borne by the killer whale itself. After eight hours, the water pump was overwhelmed and broke after working for a long time. When people were anxious, the sea level finally began to rise. After another hour, the tide finally rose high enough for the killer whale to break free from the broken rock. The sheets were removed from the orca, and in order not to scare the orca, the people retreated to the boat and sailed some distance away so the orca could swim out of its prison on its own. People prayed silently on the boat that the killer whales still have the strength to return to the sea. The killer whale moved its body first, and after making sure that it could float, in order to avoid accidents, the killer whale waited until the sea water rose a little more before swimming back into the sea. The killer whale called again, and this time people could hear the joyful emotion from the killer whale's call. People rejoiced that the killer whale was successfully rescued, and when they were about to leave, people found that they were surrounded by killer whales. Just when people were wondering, it was discovered that the leader was the little killer whale that had just been rescued. The little killer whale kept twisting its body, and then imitated humans to swing up and down to express its gratitude. united with his companion after seven years. Something remarkable occurred that left everyone in awe. The extraordinary event defied expectations. And revealed the enduring power of their connection. A chance encounter and unbreakable bond, when Adolf. A seasoned trainer, stumbled upon a lion cub by chance. Little did he know that it would mark. The beginning of an extraordinary bond. The helpless creature, hungry and frightened. Tugged at Adolf's heartstrings. Prompting him to rescue it and provide a safe haven. Naming her Nala after, the Lion King. Adolf took on the role of an adoptive father. Caring for her as if she were his own child. As Nala grew, Adolf's love and care remained unwavering. He nurtured her, ensuring her health, well-being, and happiness. However, it became apparent that Nala's needs exceeded what Adolf's wildlife reserve could provide. Her instincts as a lioness demanded more space and the ability to hunt for herself. Reluctantly, Adolf sought out the White Tiger Foundation in Mexico City a specialized institution equipped to understand and care for large animals like Nala. A difficult decision and farewell, it was a painful decision for Adolf. For it meant parting ways with the lioness he had raised as his own. Nala faced a new chapter in her life. Separated from the only human she had ever known, the foundation would offer her a chance to live in an environment more suited to her needs where she could thrive and be amongst her kind. But the question lingered in Adolf's mind, would Nala remember him? Nala settled into her new home at the foundation, adapting to her surroundings, and forming bonds with her caretakers and fellow lions. 
Meanwhile, Adolf couldn't help but wonder how she was faring. After seven long years, he finally had the time and resources to visit her. Adolf knew that Nala might not remember him. But he needed to see for himself. How she had grown and adapted to her new life. Stepping into the lioness's enclosure. Adolf was met with a mix of anticipation and apprehension. The staff at the foundation warned him of the risks. But he was determined to reconnect with the lioness he had raised as a cub. Would Nala remember him? Would she harbor any negative feelings? Reunion and the power of connection, to everyone's surprise. Nala's reaction was immediate. She sensed something familiar and began pacing back and forth. Carefully observing Adolf's presence, calling out her name. Adolf saw a spark of recognition in her eyes. Without warning, Nala charged towards him, causing momentary panic. But instead of an attack, she pounced on Adolf. Wrapping her enormous paws around him in a powerful embrace. The staff at the foundation stood in awe as. They witnessed this incredible reunion. What initially seemed like a potential tragedy transformed into. A heartwarming display of affection and recognition. Nala's behavior conveyed not anger or aggression. But sheer excitement and joy. Akin to a long lost daughter finding her father again. In that embrace. Adolf could feel their connection as strong as ever. Playing together, Nala held onto Adolf's leg. Rested her head against his chest. And clung to him with unwavering devotion. Despite the passing of time and the transformation from. A tiny cub to a majestic lioness. Nala's love for Adolf remained unchanged. She didn't want him to leave. Gripping him tightly with her claws and legs. Reminiscent of their early days together. In that moment, the world stood still. Witnessing the indomitable bond between man and lioness. Nala's love for Adolf transcended the confines of time and space. Rekindling their connection as if it had never been severed. The Foundation staff, overwhelmed by this extraordinary display. Marveled at the enduring power of their bond. Their story also serves as a reminder of the vital role that conservation organizations play in ensuring the well-being of endangered species. The White Tiger Foundation and similar institutions dedicate their resources and expertise to providing a safe and nurturing environment for animals like Nala, enabling them to live fulfilling lives in captivity while contributing to global conservation efforts. And Nala's story touched the hearts of people worldwide, inspiring many to support wildlife conservation initiatives. When a man rescued an owl, he never expected that the owl would behave unexpectedly. As a bird of prey, the owl is very humane, actively repaying the help of humans, and even showing sympathy with humans. What on earth is it? What happened between the owl and the man? The story takes place in a small town in South Africa. Where there are large and small farms all over the place. And the people living here enjoy the quiet and comfortable living environment of the small town. Like most people living in small towns. Chris owns a small farm. The kind-hearted Chris loves animals. He has devoted half his life to protecting nature. He has adopted many injured stray cats. The nearby residents when encountering animals in trouble. Chris is always the first to think of. And he seems to have become an animal protection expert in the town. This morning, Chris got up and walked to the farm. Checked the animals as usual. And after confirming that there was nothing unusual. Chris stood on the grass outside the farm. Lamenting that it was another sunny day. But when he looked into the distance, he found something on his grass. So Chris walked over slowly, and there was an owl lying on the ground. Chris approached the raptor cautiously, not wanting to frighten it, while the owl saw someone approaching, and didn't make any intimidating movements, and didn't even plan to fly away.
just kept one motion and remained motionless. Chris was puzzled by the owl's behavior of neither attacking nor fleeing. The abnormal behavior seemed to indicate that the owl was in trouble. Seeing that the owl didn't show any aggressive behavior, Chris boldly got closer to it. When they faced each other, Chris saw some small marks on the owl's body. It's like receiving some kind of human surgery. Although the wound has mostly healed, it still looks exhausted. Chris judged by the state of the owl's feathers. Maybe it just received treatment not long ago. But the wound was not completely healed before being released. And the too fast flight made its wound worse. So it can only wait for help on this grassland. Although Chris doesn't know where the owl came from. But right now it's just a small animal that needs help. And of course Chris chooses to help it. Because the farm is not far from home. Chris wanted to take it home to take care of it. At first, the owl was indifferent to Chris' call and was very vigilant. But perhaps because of Chris' gentleness and perseverance. The owl finally he moved his body, allowing Chris to stroke it. Finally Chris took the owl home gently in his arms. Chris is an unusual person, he is full of love for animals. As long as there are animals in need, he will do his best, so the owl is no exception. He is ready to take care of the owl until it is fully recovered. Chris found small worms and plenty of water for the owl. It was already hungry. So it let go of its guard against the food. And finished eating it in a short while. At night, Chris was worried about the owl's sleeping problem. He had never raised an owl and didn't know much about its living habits. He could only rely on his own experience and put a soft nest beside his bed. And a blanket was placed next to it, hoping that the owl could sleep comfortably at night. Obviously, the owl was still hesitating. It never entered Chris's bedroom, and stood quietly at the door of the room. It wasn't until Chris went to bed that he carefully crossed the threshold and went to the den and fell asleep. Chris woke up many times throughout the night. He was worried that the owl would not adapt to the environment here. But found that the little one slept very soundly. Maybe it was wandering outside for too long. At this time, it has no energy to think about other things. The next morning, when Chris woke up, he saw a surprising scene. The owl was dozing off on Chris's bookshelf. Chris thought it was a sign of the owl's initiative. So he decided to further deepen your relationship with each other. And prove yourself that you can be trusted. Chris went to the window and. Opened both windows so the owl was free to stay or leave. Fortunately, owl chose to stay. And the two friends began to approach slowly in a subtle way. And gradually became inseparable. Chris vacated the bookshelf for a few floors and. Made some beautiful decorations. Owls like to sleep on the bookshelf. So Chris transformed the bookshelf into a bird shelf. And filled it with toys that owls like. I have to say, in the process of getting along with this little animal. Chris also felt full of fun. Over the next two months, the owl's wounds healed quickly. And Chris applied medicine to its wounds every day. Checked its wings, and even practiced flying with it. The owl has become lively, and cheerful from being cautious at the beginning. It often flies around the house, and sometimes slips out of the window to play. But it seems to understand that this is its own home, and it will never be in Chris's sight. Besides, sometimes Chris thinks he has a small pet. Now that the owl has regained its health, Chris began to exercise its predation ability because it always has to return to live in nature. And it is very important to catch prey to feed itself. After a few weeks of training, the owl quickly learns to forage on its own. One morning Chris found the owl on a bookshelf, nibbling on a fresh worm, and he understood that. The owl was perfectly capable of taking care of itself. And maybe it wouldn't be long before it returned to live in the wild. Although that's good news. But Chris was still a little bit reluctant.
One morning, Chris was ready to release the owl. They came to a forest, which was a certain distance from Chris' home. Chris hoped that it could live a free life in the wild and put it in a branch. Stroked its body, turned around and went home. Although Chris was very sad. He knew that this was the best way to live for an owl. In this way, Chris returned to his old life. Without the existence of an owl. He always felt that life was less joyful. But he did not regret his decision to let the owl go. Chris would never have imagined that something shocking would happen. Just the day after he let the owl go. He was reading a book in the house. When a strange sound disturbed his thoughts. Chris looked out of the window curiously. And he saw the owl. It flew towards Chris in a hurry. When the owl flew to Chris's side. He saw clearly that there was a mouse hanging in the owl's mouth. It put the mouse at Chris's feet. Took a look at him, and flew away again. Chris was very shocked, he didn't expect. The owl to come to see him with, food. Which is the most precious prey for it, and it was delivered to him. Chris understood that this was the owl's gratitude. But in the afternoon, the owl actually came again. It circled around Chris a few times. Played with Chris for a while and then left. After that, the owl would bring food to visit Chris every day. And the owl could come and go as he wanted. And Chris got used to its sudden visit. And this magical connection would continue. All things have spirituality. When animals accept the help of human beings. They will keep this love in their hearts. And will definitely repay human beings in their own way. Therefore, the connection between humans and animals is close. When humans and animals express their love to each other. The world we live in become- You would absolutely not believe the incredible and sorrowful story behind this photo. In nature, the unexpected and unique bonds formed between different species always leave us amazed. These relationships include beautiful friendships and, as reflected in today's story, even motherly connections. You would never think that a lion could establish such a wonderful connection with humans, let alone the mother-son relationship showcased in today's story. This story takes place in Colombia. Ana Julia Torres, a 50-year-old woman, has dedicated her entire life to caring for animals, and Villa Lorena is the place where she cares for them, including a lion named Poppy. Ana has been raising him since Poppy was a cub, and for a whole 19 years, she has been taking care of this lion. For Poppy, Anna is his mother, as his biological mother died shortly after giving birth. This mother lion had been rescued from a severely distressed zoo. Dr. Joruela, a veterinarian in Juruela, did everything possible to save her life, but she passed away shortly after giving birth to the lion cub Jupiter due to deteriorating health. Therefore, Anna took on the responsibility of caring for Jupiter and referred to Dr. Joruela as Jupiter's dad. Anna deeply loves this lion, and since his birth, she has been concerned about his health, playing with him, and feeding him. Jupiter sees Anna as his mother, and they often play and lie on the floor together. For Anna, Jupiter is just a very friendly little lion, and under her attentive care, the lion thrives and grows. However, unfortunately, the story takes a turn when, with the joint support of the Cali City Environmental Management Agency in the Vale Natural Area Autonomous Group, it is decided that the conditions at Villa Lorena are not ideal. The Cauca province handed it over to the Sinu and San Jorge Natural Area Autonomous Group, which then sent it to the Crocodile Park in Monteria, Cordoba province. However, this decision was almost like a sentence for Ana Julia. She couldn't believe that her child was taken away, but she was almost powerless, unable to stop it. This measure was said to be in the interest of the animal, but in reality, it turned out to be quite the opposite. Several months later, Anna Julia decided to visit her son at the Crocodile Park, only to encounter a horrifying scene. She could hardly believe what they had done to her child. I had an intuition that I had to see him, like a son calling out to his mother, saying he's dying. When I saw him, it felt like someone was telling me to go see him, she said. When she saw Peter, she was heartbroken, 
as he was in a terrible state. The animal was emaciated, with dull fur and a vacant look in his eyes. This wasn't the lion she left behind, the 260-kilogram lion with shining mane, powerful muscles, and a positive attitude. It all shattered the woman's heart. Someone told me the lion hadn't eaten since Monday, but I don't know. Animals like him can't go from almost 260 kilograms to 100 kilograms in that time. Lions can endure up to 20 days without food, Anna Julia said. When Jupiter noticed Anna Julia coming to visit him, the lion showed some improvement. Through the bars of his enclosure, he touched the cage with his mouth so she could pet him. Seeing his mom return, he was very happy. When people asked Donna Julia Torres if she felt the weight of those huge claws on her shoulders as she embraced her, she said she only felt love for the animal. Anna quickly posted photos of the lion on social media. The news of Jupiter's critical condition spread widely on social media, and videos of him kissing and hugging Anna Julia from years ago became popular. The news gained attention with the tag, Save Jupiter. Anna Julia reached out to Dr. Oriola, the veterinarian from Juruela. The two spent nearly seven days with the animal, staying with it at night and administering fluids. Despite moments of improvement, Jupiter was severely ill. After the outrage sparked by the photos of the dying animal, the government took action. Minister of Defense Carlos Holmes Trujillo ordered Jupiter to be transferred to a military aircraft and flown to Cali for better care, where he could be examined by Dr. Joruela and other experts. Additionally, Jupiter would be able to maintain contact with Anna Julia. Even the prosecutor announced an investigation to determine if there was negligence towards the animal. Jupiter's condition was so critical that during the transfer, no anesthesia was needed, just Anna Julia's presence calmed him down. Upon arrival in Cali, he was moved to the Wildlife Care and Assessment Center of the Northern Environmental Management Department. Although Anna Julia's last report indicated Jupiter's condition was stable, the animal's health was still precarious. Doctors reported liver and kidney dysfunction, as well as anemia, resembling a human in intensive care. As explained by Enrique Selda, an animal behavior expert at the National University, Jupiter was experiencing what is known as animal neurosis. When big cats move from one side to another without pausing, it is a result of being confined in cages. Big cats are animals that need to roam many kilometers, and neurosis can lead to very high stress levels. When this situation becomes chronic, it may trigger pathologies such as lowered immunity, diseases, infections, and liver problems. Jupiter continues to fight for his life under the care of an interdisciplinary medical team at the Environmental Management Department. Ana Julia Torres visits the lion personally every day, and the bond between them is so strong that this lady had to be hospitalized as well because she became sick seeing her little lion in that condition. She said, due to stress, my immune system has decreased, but well, when I see Jupiter, I am happy that he is stable. He has opened his eyes, walked unsteadily, taken a few steps, and then sat back down. In the morning, we are waiting for results to understand how he is doing. The deep bond expressed between Anna Julia and Jupiter may be surprising, but such cases are not uncommon. It's explained that lions are the only social cats, whereas other big cats are solitary. This is a learning process that occurs in the first few months of life, during which the lion determines who its mother is. In the case of lions, within six months to a year, the lion might have identified this woman as its mother and thrived under her companionship. One of their most terrible decisions was taking him away, the biologist said. Faced with Jupiter's story, an inevitable question arises, what conditions do lions face in Colombia? Selda completed his master's degree in the United States and worked in zoos in Los Angeles and San Diego. He explained that there are various reasons why lions eventually end up in the United States, one of which is being brought by circuses. Circuses were the earliest wildlife traffickers, and fortunately, they are now banned from bringing animals, with ongoing efforts to completely eliminate these places that treat animals as entertainment for the public. Moreover, the conditions for animals in many places are extremely poor. 
Another pathway for such animals to come to Colombia is through zoos. Selda stated that in the United States, there has been a strong incentive to end zoos because they were giving animals to hunters, who brought mainly African animals. This movement changed people's perception of zoos, and they began breeding animals in captivity for reintroduction purposes. Experts point out that a positive example for Colombia is the reintroduction of bald eagles, which has been successful in multiple locations. Offspring bred in the United States have been brought back to Colombia for repopulation, emphasizing the importance of introducing such thinking in Colombia. While the Santa Cruz Zoo and Jamie Duque Zoo are undergoing changes, many other zoos have yet to change. Ana Julia continues to stand by her son, hoping for his quick recovery. Both she and the veterinarian are responsible for Jupiter's daily care, providing all necessary attention and treatment until he fully recovers. Selda and Ana Julia urge against purchasing animals, especially wildlife. We should cherish, care for, and protect animals to prevent cases like Jupiter's from happening again. Now it's time for you to answer these questions in today's video, how do you view the relationship between Ana Julia Torres and her lion, Jupiter? Do you think Jupiter should continue to stay with his foster mother, or should he be sent back to his natural habitat, perhaps in another country? Are you aware of similar stories where unusual bonds are formed between different species? Share your thoughts in the comments. Additionally, you can like to let us know you enjoy our content, and we'll keep producing more similar videos. Until next time. Friends, have you ever seen animals asking for help from humans? People often rescue animals, but how often and exactly how do they actually rescue animals? Today's episode will tell the amazing stories of animals that people were lucky enough to catch on video. Imagine this situation, you are traveling on a boat in the ocean, and suddenly you see a huge shark trying to catch a turtle, what are you most likely to do? You might grab your phone and start filming, but seeing the turtles desperately fighting for their lives, the protagonist of this video decides to help. So when the shark finally decided to take a break and get behind the prey, the guys just dragged the turtle over to the boat and let it stay with them for a while, which was enough for the turtle to recover and move on. In the next scene, you can see how a man removes a fishing net from a huge whale, which seems to know where to call for help when it swims up to the boat. Not everyone will decide to rescue such a huge animal from the net with their own hands, and here we see a man rescue a whale. Although the whale did not swim back to the ocean on its first attempt, it eventually succeeded. In the clip, kind person pours water straight from a bottle to the eagle so it doesn't get thirsty. Drivers notice the eagle on the side of the highway, and it didn't seem to be afraid of people at all, instead, it drank as much as it wanted and became acquainted with the group. Many people love squirrels because they are so cute, but they have a short lifespan. Statistically, 75% to 80% of squirrels die before their first year of life. The squirrel got tangled up in the fishing line and just lay helpless on the ground, begging for help. That's when the two spotted it, and they used scissors to free the little squirrel. The baby squirrel became so attached to the people that when they first tried to release him, he didn't want to leave them. However, it will disappear into the greenery at some point, only to quickly return to the pocket of the savior. The men decided to bring the squirrel home, and they built a cage with wheels and set up an obstacle course for it, and the squirrel lived with them until the following spring. A puppy was yelling for help when it became entangled in the tent when a policeman walked up to the puppy and grabbed the cloth. It wasn't easy, but the man managed to tear off a piece of the tent and rescued the poor puppy, who immediately stood up and hugged its savior. A man notices a hungry wolf and without hesitation decides to feed it, but the beast doesn't seem to be afraid of the man, just seeing how close it is to humans. As it turns out, wolves are so intelligent that they can bond with people and even trust them. After saying goodbye, the driver wanted to leave, but the wolf blocked his way. The man has no more bacon, only his bread for the wolf. The animal chased the man for a few more minutes, either because the wolf was grateful to be fed, or because it was still hungry and simply asked for more food. The bear cub was accidentally trapped, it was in pain and frightened, but people rushed to help it. 
In the end, the bear was free and ran off to find his mother, or at least he looked like her. Now you can see rescue teams coming to help a cow with its head stuck in a tree, but that's not the only problem with the animal not being able to move, and it's also at risk of being attacked by a bull. They were held back by the rush of water from the water cannon while people managed to move the branches out of the way and free the animals. A thirsty leopard was found with its head stuck in a jar as it sought water in the Pashi Desert in Rajasthan, India. Amazingly, the leopard did not panic or try to escape, instead it waited patiently to be rescued. Rescuers managed to free the leopard after injecting it with a sedative. The man climbed onto a street lamp to rescue a pigeon trapped in it. Here are four orcas stranded on the ice, including two that are nearly inaccessible. The ice moves towards them, squeezing them, forcing them to call for help. It's important for rescuers, divers and volunteers to move the ice around so the orcas don't get poked by the ice. People splash water on the animals every once in a while, but every now and then the animals get on their backs, which can cause them to suffocate. Therefore, the rescue team decided to establish a connection with the animal. People talk to the orcas, encouraging and comforting them. The video shows an injured 6-meter animal calmly performing its task. People's orders don't show any aggression towards them, it allows rescuers to do whatever is necessary. After being examined by a veterinarian, the animal quickly caught up with the other orcas. Diver Joshua Lees saw a lemon shark underwater as it swam around and elbowed the man as if saying something was wrong. Divers examined the shark and found something protruding from its belly. It was a big rusty hook, and it took a lot of effort to get it off, and the wound would heal quickly. The large, defenseless shark was entangled in a rope and calmly waited for the man to cut it off. The shark can now swim away, but there's no guarantee the animal won't get in trouble again. Whale sharks are rare animals whose numbers have been slowly declining in recent years due to illegal hunting. Now you can see how the fisherman takes the shell from a poor little turtle, and see that its whole body is covered with shells, not only on the back, but also on the belly and head, these uninvited guests are the turtle's acquaintances. Crustaceans use sea turtles as their substrate, and the shell needs to stay in the current at all times. If there are too many, they may cause discomfort, possibly tumors or infections. When an American condor named Betty was found dying with the upper part of its beak almost completely missing, a team of experts decided to help the eagle and for the first time created its information throughout the paper. The beak of the eagle is uneven, it has cavities and consists of different fragments. As you can imagine it took months to create this 3D prosthesis and hours to attach the printed nylon beak. The story ends well, with Betty getting back to Avery and drinking water. A pod of bottlenose dolphins has formed a protective circle around surfer Todd Andrews after a great white shark attacked surfer Todd Andrews in the Pacific Ocean, injuring his back and right leg. Slowly, the rescuers and victims at sea successfully reached the shore, and they provided Todd with qualified medical assistance. According to Todd, without the help of the dolphins, the sharks would have ripped him to pieces. It is wonderful that people and animals live in harmony and are always ready to help each other. Of course, that's not always the case, but let's hope our world has more of the good than the bad. Friends, that's all for today's video. Let us know what you think of today's video in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching, see you next time.